So, semester by the sea, training the next generation. I want to give you, uh, this is going to be a tag team, just like semester by the sea has been for 10 years. And I'm going to lead it off. I'm going to talk to you about um, the need that we saw to do this program uh, 10 years ago, how this program was a bridge academically to Florida Atlantic University long before we realized that we would be part of Florida Atlantic University. We're going to talk about the early semester by the sea uh, history um, and what our program of studies is today. We're going to talk about some of the uh, added features that this program has, including um, Florida Keys field trips, at sea experiences, and the part that I'm looking forward to the most is we're going to have uh, some perspectives from previous and uh, current students. Um, and lastly, we're going to just uh, give you a quick how-to on how, you, how to get involved if you're interested in Semester by the Sea and interested in the kinds of programs that we do. So um, again, I'm going to sort of set the stage. And uh, uh, I, I don't think I have to convince a lot of people in the room that Florida is intimately tied to the ocean. Our economy, our resources are, are, are so dependent on the marine environment. And indeed, um, the, the, the uh, many businesses, uh, visitors, um, tourism, uh, why people move to Florida, it's all driven, I think, in large part uh, by our marine environment, beaches, um, coral reefs, um, and so on. And I think most of us would agree, especially if you've seen changes through time, and we've had some lectures in the series about that, that as our population continues to grow and put more demand on marine resources, um, that there is a challenge um, in that the more we can educate uh, people about the marine environment and how best to manage it and to understand it, um, the better off we will all be. So back in uh, a decade ago, we said that we really need to begin to train more marine scientists and managers to address uh, specifically the challenges that will be occurring in Florida's coastal environment. So you might say, what kind of challenges are we talking about? And this is for the students in the room, those of them who just finished their final exam this morning in this year's program, and those who have been in the program in the past years. Some of these things might be as close to our doorsteps as the Indian River Lagoon, where we know it's a very special uh, area, uh, high biodiversity, uh, undergoing urbanization, uh, lots of challenges with freshwater uh, influences, and all of our human activities. Um, or you might have been to the lecture in November when we had a presentation on projections for sea level rise. And this is a map uh, that basically shows uh, the potential of the inundation of South Florida. So what does this mean for us over the next 100 years? Is that really going to happen? Is there anything we can do to mitigate it? Um, should we be putting money into restoration of South Florida if, in fact, it's going to disappear? What kind of changes are we going to have to do in, the, in activities that we are currently engaged in now if we want to anticipate uh, climate change in South Florida. And we know that's a very important issue. Or maybe you're more interested about current events. Um, what is this oil spill that we all know and heard a lot about just in the last few days? What's going to be the impact on marine resources throughout the Gulf, Florida? And if it's a significant spill, which it appears to be the case, um, these are going to be, uh, this is going to be research and management questions that are going to be addressed not just over this year or th these few months. It's going to take years and decades to really assess the, the damage potentially. So let me first say that was, that was what we, we all saw, th these needs. Um, Harbor Branch had engaged in education efforts almost since its very beginning. Uh, Harbor Branch started in 1971. Many of you know our summer intern program. We have some former summer interns in, in, the, in the room tonight. Um, we've been doing that for 36 years. Um, We've had a postdoctoral program that went for about 30 years until uh, we had an interruption in, in funding. And uh, we will be doing a postdoc program again starting um, in a few months here at Harbor Branch with hiring of five postdocs. So that's quite exciting. Um, and these uh, were programs that we always did in the context of a research institution. And that's still very much what we are. So the intern experience was, was designed uh, to give a hands-on experience for university students for 10 weeks in the summer. Um, uh, and our postdoc program was either a year or two-year term uh, to get the same thing, but after they have finished their, their PhD degree. 
We actually started summer courses as long ago as 1989. We actually started them in the second floor of what was then the science lab. It's a building that we did lose in the hurricanes of 2004. This effort was led by Dr. Kevin Eckelbarger, who uh, really was the first one to promote the idea of education at Harbor Branch as, far, as part of everything that we did here. And a lot of our scientists were beginning to believe that we needed to do one, something else in addition to our, our, our research efforts, and that was education, uh, teaching of uh, university students, undergraduate and graduate students. Largely, our program then was a summer program. Uh, Kevin left a couple years later, and for 20 years or more, he's been up at the Darling uh, Center in the University of Maine as director, and he has taken all the ideas that he developed here and really uh, done a most excellent job um, for the state of Maine. In 1991, we had an MOU between Harbor Branch and, uh, and FAU. We were separate institutions at the time. And basically, it laid out the establishment of collaborative uh, academic program, undergraduate, graduate, and postdoctoral studies, that we were partners in this effort. And this was um, also the, the same year that this building, the Johnson Education Center, came online. And we started doing a lot, a lot of additional educational programming. And that's also when a lot of our public programs began that many of you know about. It took 10 years from the time that document was signed till we really acted on it. And that came about when the then Dean of Science, Dr. John Wiesenfeld, and the then, then Director of Harbor Branch Education, Dr. Sue Cook, uh, began a dialogue. And it led to um, an idea that um, we should partner um, to um, develop um, more of our marine science education programs as part of um, what FAU offered academically. Um, and the first steps actually were uh, um, started in this building upstairs, and it actually sat down with the meeting where uh, Dr. Wiesenfeld and I were together. It led to me to submit a one pager to the university. And basically, in that one pager, I proposed a one semester program with the idea that this would be a marine science enrichment that we could draw students from FAU and beyond, and that we could do it here with existing staff and existing space. And actually, that was the beginning of what we now call Semester by the Sea. That was our old Harbor Branch logo. That was the old um, FAU uh, logo that we used in that first banner for the program. So that was in 2000. And this became kind of an academic bridge. Uh, Dr. Jerry Lafferty, who at the time was the FAU Treasure Coast Vice President, uh, found funding in November of that year. And uh, that gave us about two months to develop a program, staff it, and recruit students. So that's kind of a pretty fast startup. There, why we were able to do that is, although you know, Dr. Wiesenfeld and I had this idea, it really took a whole bunch of people to execute. And this, this was the original staff, um, the original structures for Semester by the Sea. Um, Dr. Clay Cook, um, an invertebrate biologist, who um, was with Semester by the Sea for eight years. He currently works for the National Science Foundation uh, in Washington, D.C. He, was a, um, he led our marine biodiversity class for eight years. Uh, Dr. Tammy Frank, who you'll hear in a, in a few minutes, um, was, was a, a key part of this. Um, she uh, has always taught the functional biology class. She has always co-teamed uh, another class, marine science, with Dr. Ned Smith. Uh, my part initially was uh, as an instructor in two of the courses, but primarily one of trying to, trying to um, I guess, uh, coordinate or oversee the program and try to develop a tie with FAU. Uh, Dr. Ned Smith, you'll hear about in a few minutes. Many of you know him from some of his previous lectures in the series. He's a physical oceanographer and has always taught half of that, the other half of that marine science class. And another really key person was Dr. Craig Young, who led the marine ecology class, but also I think was, um, was a driving force in our, our connections to FAU on the academic side. Uh, Craig left a couple years later, and actually he, like Kevin, left for a directorship. Uh, other part of the country, Oregon. Uh, and ever since then, uh, he has been director of a lab in Oregon, again, doing quite nicely um, there as well. So that was the original team of instructors. So the three of us that, uh, that remain from the five are going to be giving you uh, a very brief overview, and then we're going to share the podium with some of the students. So we actually started the program in 2001, January. And three weeks later, we had our senator, Ken Pruitt, our state senator, come. And he kind of officially launched the program on the back of this building. 
um, with some of our students, and some of these are going to meet tonight. Um, and he uh, got to see what the program was all about. Senator Pruitt was really a key person, those of you who live in the area. This was just at the beginning where the expression Research Coast was being used. And I and some other Harbor Branch folks would go to meetings in, in St. Lucie County um, with Senator Pruitt and, and, and other, um, other uh, key figures trying to, uh, trying to really expand what we could do in St. Lucie County on the, on the uh, educational and research side. Um, after three attempts in 2002, uh, we were able to get a legislative request and a key part of this is, you know, sometimes you just have to make your case very clear and very simple. This was the document that we wrote um, that described what we wanted to do with the program. This is the document that was taken to Tallahassee. Dr. Lafferty and I met with um, community leaders. We went to talk to newspaper boards. And uh, I was very nervous about that, to be honest with you. But, but it was great because here's what I found out. We didn't have to sell this program. Everybody wanted it. The moment they heard the idea was, let's get a better understanding of our marine resources. Um, let's try to have a program for university students here on the Treasure Coast. Um, it was the easiest sell that I, I ever had to, th had to think about. So after I did it once, I said, this is easy. And so we got a tremendous amount of community support. The legislative request was approved by the legislature, approved, like, as I said, on the third attempt by the governor in 2002. That started the funding for Semester by the Sea, other academic programs, and also a new building um, that uh, many of you know from driving into the main gate. This is uh, called the FAU Harbor Branch Marine Science Building. And it was originally conceived to be a joint use facility with Harbor Branch scientists and the College of Science uh, from FAU. And again, uh, we could not have done this without Senator Pruitt. Um, and the only thing he ever said to me when I thanked him, and the only thing he has ever asked here, is do good things. And that's, that's his directive, and that's what we've been trying to do. We actually had a celebration here to recognize him and the other members of the local delegation at the end of the 2002. So um, in anticipation of our, of our 2003 Semester by the Sea class. What is Semester by the Sea? Well, you, you'll hear it described oftentimes as a semester of, of immersion in marine science. I think that's a good descriptor. Um, the core courses have always been the same uh, as initially conceived. Um, this includes a course in marine science taught by um, the two speakers who will follow me, Dr. Smith and Dr. Frank. Um, I call this the class Everything But Biology because this is where we talk about physical, chemical, and geological oceanography. These are things that a biologist needs to know about. And the reason we don't talk about biological oceanography is because all of our other classes are biological. Um, the class that Clay Cook led for eight years, uh, marine biodiversity, has always been team taught, usually by four or five scientists here. So many of you know I work on algae. So I can teach the algae part of that class. You don't want me to teach, um, you don't want me to teach about fish. You want a Jim Masterson who's in the audience to do that, or a Tracy Sutton who used to do that or um, several other people who have had, had that role. So uh, this, this way we get the best instructor for that group of organisms into the classroom working with the students. And uh, the team teaching adds quite a, quite a component here, I think. Uh, marine ecology has been taught by several instructors. Uh, initially, I mentioned Craig Young. Uh, for the last several years, it's been talk, taught by Dr. Ed Prophet, who's also in the room uh, tonight. Ed is a um, College of Science faculty member. He, he is directly in the Department of Biological Sciences, and he has taught that course now, I think, for five years. So it's great to have Ed with us. And both biodiversity and ecology have always been uh, heavy on the field components, and that's the part that we try to really stress, the field and lab access that we have here at Harbor Branch. Um, so students go to a range of environments, a lot of it's the Inuit Lagoon or the near shore worm reefs um, or uh, near, shore, near, near mangrove areas, seagrass beds, and so on. And then we have a lab right down the hallway so we can come back, work in the lab as we will. Um, we started off initially with one course that we considered an elective at the time. Uh, most of the students take this because it's an excellent course and it's taught by Dr. Tammy Frank who you'll meet in a few minutes. Uh, initially, it was just a three-credit lecture course, but the students and the biology department both said, got to add a lab, it would be a really good thing. And after, uh, I think, about five years, we added the lab component, which um, added a whole new dimension to that class. 
Uh, most years we have offered marine microbiology and molecular biology. Um, again, this is primarily a lab course, like the functional course, and it has been team taught initially by Peter McCarthy and Dr. Joe Lopez. Um, more recently, it's been Peter McCarthy and Dr. Joshua Voss and Dr. Sarah Edge. And um, some of you who come to the lectures have met and heard all of their presentations on their individual research areas. So um, the students get an opportunity to work with all of these folks. And so typically in a given semester, it might be 10 faculty members. Um, more recently, I think we're in our second year of an aquaculture course, um, which added another um, aspect of uh, not only the work we do, but of a, of a growing discipline in Florida. Um, and many of you have heard some of our aquaculture talks and know about our aquaculture part. And that, is, that course has been led by Dr. John Scarpa, uh, who also is here this evening. Um, and lastly, uh, I'm not going to talk about this one very much, but also two years ago we started a, another course that was for an at-sea experience called Oceanographic Experience for Undergraduates. And Dr. Frank will talk to you about that, so I'm going to just skip over that. Um, since some of the folks in the, in the room may want to know how we do some of this, one of the key elements uh, of this, um, of this uh, program is that we take Wednesdays sort of as our, as our lab day, our field day. So those two core courses, marine ecology and marine biodiversity, we alternate them, and they're all day long. So for example, if when I teach it, I may go out in the field in the morning, uh, and we might collect for three hours. And, or it might be four, if it turns out to be a little good or conditions are not quite right. Sometimes you get stuck in the field a little bit longer. Then we can come back to the lab. We can work up all the material in the lab. Uh, somebody like a, a Dr. Voss might want to take his students down to the intertidal at a certain time. Maybe the low tides is in the afternoon. So maybe he spends the morning in the lab, and then he goes down and hits the tide just right in the afternoon. So it gives us a lot of flexibility, and it gives that immersion experience that we first um, wanted, to, wanted to reach. And I really think that that was an early scheduling matter that we did that I think really, um, really is a key part of the program. All the classes are taught here at Harbor Branch, most of them in this building. And uh, at least initially, most of the students lived on campus in our dormitories. We found, especially after the hurricanes, there's a lot more opportunities for students to live in the area. Um, and some of them do commute from like Jupiter um, on, on, a, on a regular basis. Um, this is just information that will uh, be available to anybody who wants it. But we always get the questions, you know, is there, is there higher tuition? No, you just, if you're an FAU student, you just register for like any other class and all the information is there. And on our website, you can always get the current plan for, for this particular year, um, anything that's upcoming, as, long, as, as well as any other courses that we're teaching here at Harvard Branch besides Semester by the Sea. So that's kind of a, a bookkeeping job. So my job was to just set the stage, to tell you the history, tell you why we wanted to do it, why we, the faculty, wanted to do it, um, how we had to take a few years to find the resources to do it, and how um, we did this initially just as an academic bridge to, to Florida Atlantic University. And as you know now, we're, uh, we're, we're a part of Florida Atlantic University. So I think we're only going to see further academic growth from this initial bridge. As I said earlier, we could not have done this without a wonderful group of faculty. And the first one who's here tonight in that category of wonderful faculty is Dr. Ned Smith. So Ned's going to come up. He's been with the program since the beginning. Thank you, Dennis. Well, my job uh, is to tell you about the Keys trips. And it's, although uh, it isn't uncommon uh, for us to take uh, classroom activities out of the classroom and uh, put it in the lab or take it out into the field, uh, just to, uh, uh, to, to test the ideas that we get in the uh, classroom. But within that context, I think the Keys trips would be uh, a lab trip on uh, steroids because it's a uh, four-day cavalry charge which includes driving down uh, and uh, driving back. Um, the purpose of the Keys trips, there are actually two of them. Uh, one is we want to emphasize the interrelationship between biology and geology, biology and chemistry, that kind of thing. So there's uh, the, the integration part of it. Uh, Dennis has used uh, the word uh, immersion twice, and uh, this is where the immersion, I guess there could be immersion uh, when we take uh, students out in the field here, but in the, key, in the Keys trips, we actually do jump in the water. There is a total immersion. 
And we try to uh, introduce these students to uh, as many different kinds of habitat as we can in the time that we have, uh, and also if the weather uh, enables us uh, to do that, that can be uh, an issue from, from time to time. But these are the, ha the habitats that, uh, that we try to look at, and I'll give you some slides if I can get this to, I'm not, there it goes. Uh, even before we get to where we're going, uh, we will stop off at the uh, Windley Key Geological Park um, in the Upper Keys. I'll be talking about uh, the Upper Keys in some cases, the Middle Keys in some cases, and uh, the Lower Keys in others. We try to make stops everywhere. Uh, this is a hammock uh, habitat, hammock being an elevated piece of land here. Uh, and uh, we just go around with one of the park uh, staff uh, to look at the upland uh, vegetation. We get a little more than just hammock uh, habitat in this stop, however. There is a little uh, paleo-oceanography because this uh, wall, for example, which is part of a quarry that you can just barely see here, and this wall was actually a coral reef when we had uh, much higher water levels, uh, 125,000 years ago. Now we also get a little history in this stop because uh, this is where uh, Flagler's uh, operation came through and they were using the quarry, I believe, as part of the uh, construction material for the overseas railway. Well, we're, when we actually start getting in the water, uh, I've chosen uh, the mangrove habitat uh, as the first example of that. That could be one uh, type of uh, exposure to mangrove habitat or another, depending on where we are in the Keys. This uh, was in the upper part of the lower Keys. Uh, in this case, uh, we're just uh, walking along mangroves, uh, taking, uh, taking various measurements of the trees in the process. The other possibility uh, would be uh, a mangrove or an exposure to mangrove uh, habitat. This is the true immersion version of the mangrove habitat experience. Uh, this is on the Atlantic side of, uh, uh, of Long Key. And in this case, of course, we would be emphasizing things like the uh, uh, prop roots and just another uh, part of the, uh, the uh, role that mangroves play. Uh, one of my favorites, actually, was the, the mud bank habitat. We weren't able to do that every year. It depends on where we stay, and it depends upon the weather. Uh, but if we were staying in Long Key down there, then we can take uh, a boat out uh, just a mile or so uh, into the bay, jump out, the water's three feet deep, four feet or so, and we can spook any number of things. What you might expect, uh, seagrass, water's very shallow, conch, rays, skates, that kind of thing, and occasionally students would spook uh, a, bastic, a basking shark. It was a uh, memorable uh, experience. Maybe the, uh, uh, the best stop for the, uh, uh, for the students uh, was in the upper part of the lower keys, as indicated by the arrow on the map. Uh, this is the, the, the uh, Bahia Honda State Park, and it's really just a uh, long walk along the beach, but if you have the right instructors, and we have the right instructors for this, then any number of questions will come up, and any number of questions can be answered. Uh, this is what I'm calling a high energy in, uh, environment, and by energy I mean the, uh, the large waves. And as you can see from the rack uh, that has uh, accumulated on the shore here, there must at one time, not too long ago, there must have been a very uh, uh, active storm to tear up all of the grass and uh, put it on, on, on shore. Um, I guess maybe I scooped myself here uh, pointing out that we ask questions and have questions answered as we walk along the beach. Uh, there might be a little history in this stop, too, because uh, this uh, is also you know, one of the places, I guess, where uh, Stevenson and Stevenson, I can't give you the names other than that, uh, authored a, a classic paper uh, on the intertidal zonation along rocky shores. So we're uh, walking uh, really quite literally uh, in their, uh, uh, in their in their footsteps. Uh, the only stop where we get actually way offshore, and this becomes uh, weather dependent, uh, is, is at the Luque National Marine Sanctuary. We sometimes go out in our own pontoon boat, uh, chartered pontoon boat with just our group on it. 
Other times we're out with others, but we go out uh, to the reef and we'll make uh, three or four stops along the reef where uh, we're able to look at the uh, spur and groove uh, reef environment out there. Um, I guess this might be a little bit out of order, but it's getting toward the end of the slide. This is a place to show a couple of uh, group photos. Uh, we had uh, uh, sort of a uh, tradition by the time we got about three years into this program, we would have the group have its picture taken at what we call the tree. The tree changes, we get kind of a time lapse there. We go back uh, once a year, every year, and the tree took quite a hit during Hurricane Wilma, I guess, but I believe there is still a tree there for us to uh, climb into if we go down again for another group uh, photo. Uh, I have official italicized here because the next one is the unofficial group photo. Uh, we do, at the end of the program, uh, have a chance to let our hair down. And uh, we homed in, uh, under Dennis's guidance, uh, we honed, homed in on the no-name pub, a big, big pine key, which is really an unusual place. You have to see it, I think, to, to appreciate it. They have dollar bills hanging from the, sea, uh, from the uh, ceiling, all of them autographed, of course. And do I, yes, this is where I stop. <laughs> Um, as so often, Tammy, Frank, and Ned Smith have worked together. And many of you know Tammy, um, all of her excellent presentations in the lecture series over time. Um, she is a biological oceanographer, works with visual ecology, vertical migration. And as I said, she has been integral to more courses than any other. She's, she takes uh, a greater load of teaching than, than any of us. So we're so happy that Tammy has stuck with it for all these years. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today is kind of the genesis of the Oceanographic Techniques course, which is one of our newest courses. I'm an open ocean biologist, and I had a lot of research cruises. And um, as Michelle, one of my former students, reminded me today, actually in 2001, I took my first students on one of my research cruises. Oftentimes, we have extra room on these cruises for volunteers. So I took three in 2001, in um, 2004, and 2005. Um, the students would volunteer to come out on these cruises. In um, 2006 and um, 2007, I actually had a couple of repeats who were on the, they liked the 2004 cruise so much they came out again. Now, the students who came out on these cruises, um, they told me this was the experience of a lifetime for them, and they wished that their fellow students could have had this experience, either because they realized this might be something they want to do, or they got so seasick, they realized they never wanted to go on a cruise again, and were happy to found out on a two-week experience rather than during a master's or a PhD thesis. So in 2007, my NSF grant was ending, and we knew that for future years we wouldn't have funding. We thought it was sort of a shame that it was so variable and dependent upon my cruises. Coincidentally, at this time, I got a call for proposals from Florida Institute of Oceanography. This is not a bricks and mortar institution. What it actually is is a consortium of 21 universities, colleges, and marine stations. So the local ones would be FAU and the Smithsonian Marine Station, but it's up and down Florida. And the mission of the, of the Florida Institute of Oceanography was to develop and promote education and research initiatives. And what they were in the call for proposal is you could apply for ship time that could be used only for educational purposes, not for somebody's research, which was perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. So Ned and I wrote a proposal, and we got it funded. And the FAE requires cost sharing by the institution. And ship time is about $6,000 a day, and the cost sharing is 10%. So that meant we needed to come up with a considerable sum of money in order to fund these expeditions. And luckily, Lon and Audrey Kite, the ones who financed the Kite Center at IRSC, also donated money so that we could run the Oceanographic Techniques course here at Harbor Branch. So the new course was called Oceanographic Experience for Undergraduates, and it provided, theoretically, a research experience on the open ocean for students. The first year, in 2009, we were on the RV Weatherbird, and 
For the first leg of the cruise, these are two short cruises because there's not enough room for all the students to go on one long cruise. We pounded our way out for four hours. Most of the students were seasick, and the captain looked at me and said, you know, this is going to be an experience for them, but it's really not the kind you want to give them. <laughs> so we decided to turn around and come back and thought it was a better idea if we did our work in the lagoon where at least the students could still get experience with oceanographic techniques even if they couldn't be out on the ocean. In year two, we went out on the RV Bellows, which is a 70-foot vessel, and we had basically white caps in the inlet, so the possibility of going out on the ocean wasn't even considered. Once again, we had our oceanographic experience on the Indian River. But still, the students got experience with a number of techniques, and the nice thing about the bellows is the students actually got to handle the gear. So they were able to deploy a Cape Town dredge, several different types of net, a CTD. The CTD, basically in the Indian River Lagoon, you were doing a one-foot CTD, but at least they learned what the CTD does, and so they would then be able to apply this knowledge if they went out on the open ocean. They were able to sort through mud samples, learn how to make mud pies, <laughs> learn how to clean out oceanographic gear, learn new sampling techniques. We actually discovered that extremely long fingernails were extraordinarily useful for sampling tinafores. <laughs> And lastly, they learned about one of the best oceanographic pieces of equipment, which is black plastic. In this case, they'd heard about how brilliant luminescent tinafores were, but on the second leg of the cruise, we caught all the tinafores during the day, so if they wanted to see the bioluminescence, they had to crawl into a black plastic bag. <laughs> it's obviously worth it for them because a number of them did this. So in addition to the oceanographic or non-oceanographic but still oceanographic techniques experience, they also had the data analysis experience that each group collected samples out on the research crews, they came back into the lab, they sorted through their samples, they each developed research projects for themselves, then they were taught how to make a presentation quality poster. If these students decide to go on to a graduate school, this is probably what they will do for presenting their research the first time. So these are the research posters that were from the class of 2010, and they're hanging out there in the hallway if you want to see them after this lecture. To make this a more realistic experience for the students, we also had them do a poster session. And so we have the Marine Oceanographic Academy, which is a high school dedicated to learning um, about a number of different topics with the marine, marine theme. And they are right across the street. So the MOA students came over, and our students had to present their posters to them, just like they would do in a real scientific poster presentation. And let me tell you, those MOA students are tough. They know their stuff. This is probably the toughest poster session these students are ever going to have to do. Okay, so um, well, you've heard from the teachers, and you know in a classroom you need, there's two groups, right, mainly, teachers and students. And obviously the students is, is the whole reason why we are doing um, this program. So I would like, before we hear from the students, I would like to suggest that the, the big benefactors of this um, partnership that we launched uh, in 2001 are going to be the students who are going to go on and do great things. And I, I found this picture, and I had, I had it just in the presentation. And then I, I took a look at that picture. And it's just um, a thing that we've done every year with the students. In this case, it's Dr. Masterson um, uh, seining with the students. And I, looked, I took a look. Oops, sorry. I don't have the mic, so i got to stay here. I took a look at the students, and um, I looked at them today. And I went here, and I said, she just finished her master's, College of Charleston, coming back to Florida. He's uh, finishing up his veterinarian degree in New Zealand. He's working on his geoscience PhD at FAU. Um, we have somebody who now works in Alaska in, on fisheries. And um, 
Environmental consultant is, is her latest position. All five of these folks um, uh, from, from six years ago are very far along in their graduate training or out professionally. A very high percentage of our students, probably about half, go on to graduate school. The other half go into teaching, education, usually at the high school level or at environmental science centers. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's just striking. But that's just a picture that I happen to have anyway. And I, I just was looking at it and I said, my goodness, uh, that's quite an impact. But enough of us, uh, faculty or teachers. Let's start with 2010. And in particular, um, we have Nicole Moyer, who's going to speak for 2010, which ended this morning, or midday. <laughs> Still going on. Hello. All right, like he said, I'm Nicole Moyer. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> I won this year's semester by the C students. I first heard about the program my freshman year at FAU through my biodiversity professor who encouraged us to go to an information session about it. So I went to the session, listened to Dr. Hannesack talk all about the program, and I instantly fell in love and wanted to come do this. So from my freshman year on, I was planning out all my course schedules, trying to decide how I could work this into my education. So I finally made it my senior year, and I'm very glad I did. <laughs> Um, I'm a psychobiology major, so I study animal behavior, which is a little bit different from everybody else who comes here. I tend to be marine biology students. But I love the ocean, always have, and I have a particular interest in marine mammals. So I knew that I could learn a lot by coming here. The semester by the sea has definitely been the best semester of my college career. I have learned so much from being here. All of our courses are team taught by professors who are experts in their fields. So we learn tons of information from them. Uh, all the labs are out in the field, so we get to be very familiar with our surroundings. Even though we may have grown up in Florida, we never really looked at the ecosystems around us. So it's definitely been an experience doing that, getting all submerged, climbing through mangrove forests or digging around looking for algae in the lagoon. Um, um, class size is also a huge benefit to this program. I mean, we always hear about how small class sizes give us a benefit since we get to know our professors better, more close instruction but you also get to know your classmates better. And you develop great relationships with them all. I'm looking at all of them right here in the front row. They're amazing people, and you come to really rely on each other. And you learn a lot more from that, both through moral support when you're working on big projects or through studying together. A lot of us were studying for our exams together yesterday. And that's a huge benefit. Uh, another huge experience that was a very unique opportunity this program provided was the oceanographic experience, which Dr. Frank told us about. That was very interesting. Even though we didn't get to go out into the ocean, our lagoonographic experience, as we like to call it, still gave us the opportunity to learn various sampling techniques that we probably never would have seen of or even heard of otherwise. And not many undergraduates can say that they've deployed a CTD or Cape Town dredge, but we can. Uh, the course culminated in producing and presenting our posters that you probably saw out in the hallway. If you haven't, check them out. We worked hard on them, we're very proud of them but definitely something useful that we'll be able to use in the future. So I am truly grateful to have had the opportunity to come here and develop a background in marine science. I do plan to stay in the marine field. Um, my particular career interests are in animal husbandry as well as education. So I hope to combine that with my love for the marine mammals in order to care for marine mammals as well as educate the public about them. I'm currently working at Disney's Animal Kingdom where I talk to guests about a variety of different animal species. So I'm already realizing part of those goals. And as I graduate tomorrow with my Bachelor of Science degree, I look forward to the adventure that life brings, knowing that Semester by the Sea has helped me prepare for it. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks OK, so that was 2010. And we actually have somebody in the program who was here as a student in 2008. And uh, she's been still in the program every year, but not in her, her same role. Her role changes every year. And so our, our next speaker is Gabby Barbara Wright, and she'll be speaking to you on her experiences. Thank you, everyone, for coming. 
As Dennis said, I was a uh, semester by the sea in class of 2008, and I'm going to walk you through my experience and what I've been doing from then on. And I'll tell you more about this later, but this is one of the research cruises that I was lucky enough to go on with the wonderful Tammy Frank. So how it all started for me, I heard about Semester by the Sea on a field trip that I came up with in a marine biology class that I was taking at FAU. And we came up and we toured the campus and we saw the video and Dennis talked a little bit about the program. And it sounded like a really neat opportunity, but we'd come up here in November and we'd already signed up for everything that we were taking in the spring. And uh, that night we were talking about the classes and decided, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. It sounds like it's really interesting. So I went home and dropped all the classes and signed up for everything and just went out on a limb and said, all right, let's see what this program's all about. And I'm very glad that I did. It was an incredible experience, unlike anything I'd ever done before. And as you, know, you heard earlier from some of the other lectures, it was a great experience. We were able to hear from some experts in their fields teaching our classes, both in the lab and out in the field. We use a different, different sampling techniques and equipment types. And the best part about it is we're right here in the Indian River Lagoon. It's right in our backyard. So in order to go out and sample, you just hop on a boat or go out from campus and wait out and collect fish or inverts and then just run them back to the lab and talk about them. So we're in a perfect setting to do this kind of work. So, and it took us everywhere from our own backyard all the way down to other Florida habitats, like uh, the Keys trip that Ned talked to you about. And we stayed at Moat Marine Lab for a couple of days. And here we are walking around, like Ned said, roaming the beach and just saying, hey, what's this? This is interesting. Talking about physical and biological components. So following that year, I was able to participate in the summer internship program where I worked in the Harmful Algal Bloom Lab with Dr. Brian LaPointe and two uh, former Semester by the Sea also students, Scott and Chip, who are here tonight. And um, it was a really great experience because I was able to go out in the field, dive and collect my samples and bring them back into the lab and uh, grow them in an incubator. So I was looking at Calerpa brachypus, which is an invasive species of algae that's overgrowing our Florida reefs. And we were trying to figure out what's fueling these blooms and if there's anything that we can do to manage or maintain them in the future to protect our reefs. And these are just some of our results, growing the algae in different lights and temperatures and nutrient components. And it was really interesting because you got to come up with a project and sort of take control of it and give a proposal and write a paper and then also give a defense. So much like what you do in graduate school. So, and definitely by far the opportunity of a lifetime was given uh, by the wonderful Dr. Tammy Frank. She offered for me to go out on a research cruise with her. It was a NOAA funded cruise in the Bahamas for 10 days and we got to, I actually got to make two sub dives uh, down to over 2,000 feet where we were looking for benthic bioluminescence or things that were producing biological sources of light on the seafloor. And we collected all sorts of really neat critters and just learned a lot and it was just fantastic, unlike anything else I could ever describe. So I'm very thankful to Tammy for you know, making that happen. So like Dennis said, I've had the opportunity of being part of Semester by the Sea not once, not twice, but three times. So I got to work with a great deal of, you know, great group of students and got to teach some of the labs. I'm teaching the Functional Biology Lab and the Marine Biodiversity Lab, or TAing, their team taught, like everyone said. And um, it's really cool because you don't really realize how much you learn until you have to teach it. And so it was a really neat teaching experience. And as I said, this was my second year helping out with the program. And this year, I actually got to take part in the oceanographic techniques class that Nicole and uh, Tammy also spoke about. And that was such a great experience for us because we got so much hands-on with all the sampling gear and techniques. And then we got to come back and say, all right, what did we get? We got all of these samples. Let's come up with a project and um, make a poster and give our first scientific poster presentation. So it was just a really great experience. And overall, so where am I at now? Well, uh, I just started my PhD in FAU's Integrated Biology Program, and I'm working with Dr. Jamie Frank. And this is the second great opportunity that she's given me, and we are studying shark vision. So specifically how um, sharks change, how their eyes and their visual capabilities change with their age, and how this is impacted by water quality and other human factors. So it's really interesting, and I'm very excited about the future. And I think that Semester by the Sea has definitely set me up for all the things that I've been doing. It's a really great program, and I think that anyone who's interested in biology will really benefit from it, because it'll definitely help you in your field. And it's all who you know and what you've done, and this is just a perfect experience for that. And I think I can speak for all the students when you know, I think all the professors that have put in their time for this, and there have been 
just wonderful, and especially Dennis Hanisak, who's put a lot of hard work into it, and it's just a very wonderful program. So if anyone has any questions, be free to hear from them after, and I'll turn it over to Dennis. That's great, yeah. So going further back um, through time, um, every time I look at these pictures, there's like, uh, I think Katie's still here, right? Katie is uh, working with Dr. Prophet on her PhD, for example. She was one of the students from 2006, 2005. Actually, that is you in the tree, right? <laughs> yeah. Chrissy's hiding. But we have, two stu we have two former students. One works for the U.S. Department of Agriculture Lab in Fort Pierce. One works here in Marine Education. Um, 2004. Uh, and you can see we're going back through time. So Ed, Ned talked about how that tree changed. Looks like it's growing, but it actually went the other way. So this was pre, pre Wilma. 2003, we had a small class. We only had five students. We had uh, President uh, Frank Brogan come for our farewell uh, that year. So he was always uh, very aware of the program, very supportive of the program. Uh, semester by the Sea, 2002, I see Scott Hurley. Scott worked here with Brian LaPointe for a few years and now works at the MOA school, Marine and Oceanographic Academy across the street. And uh, I'm just trying to pick out some of the folks that I readily see in the audience. Um, and then our, one of our other traditions that we had today was our, our farewell luncheon. Um, and you'll meet two of the folks um, now from our first year, 2001, and that's Chip Bomberger and Priscilla Winder. Well, this was, um, the, we were the first year, Chip and I were first year students, and um, we actually only heard about it just a couple weeks before the class actually started. Um, and I think it was just a flyer in the breezeway yeah. that we just happened to see when we were walking past. And us, the two of us, and a few of the other people, as you can see in year one, I think Michelle, you're right in the middle, <laughs> um, hey. were able to partake in the first year. And I mean, as you've heard it said before, I mean, we're just reiterating it. It was definitely an immersion into marine si in marine science. Um, we were able to go on a bunch of different field trips and really take advantage of where we were. So we had the Fort Pierce jetty, which is up in, this cor up in the upper left. And we were able to actually um, obtain our data, process it, um, and analyze the data and do statistics on that data to um, all from all data that we actually collected ourselves. Like a smaller version of the uh, the seagoing stuff that you guys have now, we didn't really yeah, have that component have that yet. <laughs> so we had to kind of make our little project that much more. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, no, we, it was still really cold. I remember. But we could have definitely done an oceanographic. You notice that sure. there's a big jacket, and we're all yeah. in. Really yeah, this up. was uh, <laughs> air, air temp in in the 50s, and and water temp about you know 68. So. But we were also able to go out into the lagoon and or out into the lagoon and take um, advantage of what was just off of Harbor Branch. So we went into the mud flats and dug up a bunch of different invertebrates and. Clay Cook, who was one of the most enthusiastic instructors I've ever had, um, you pull anything out and he goes, oh my god, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> so <Yeah>. it's just. <laughs> and no matter what it was, uh, yeah, he was always very enthusiastic. And we also had the opportunity to, um, to have Dr. Bossert, who was, uh, worked in marine mammals for many years here at Harbor Branch. Uh, he took us down to the Miami Sea Aquarium, sorry. And, uh, this actually, we took some uh, monofilament off of the flipper of this manatee, uh, so that was in one of the tanks. So although we didn't get to go to sea, we had some other experiences that were uh, very exciting. And as you've heard about the, the team teaching uh, concept, uh, I was just thinking while everyone else was talking, so we have a minimum of eight, you know, not including a couple TAs and things like that, um, who also helped out in the courses. That's almost you know one teacher per student. So I mean to have that level of uh, of education in an undergraduate is is really uh, amazing. And each one is you know a representative of of an uh, expert in their field. Um, and f unfortunately, John was only here uh, 
first year or two. And uh, that's John Tucker. He taught the ichthyological portion of the course. Um, I think, is there anyone else who wasn't covered? Um, that's a picture of Dr. Bossert there with the, the same manatee. And um, Joe Lopez. Joe Lopez down here. Um, Molecular biology right. um, Good, portion yeah. of marine biodiversity. So, um, and that was the neatest part. We hadn't had that before. Um, we were usually down at FAU, you had one instructor that would teach the class, and sometimes they didn't know everything about, um, about everything yeah. in that topic. They just knew, I mean, that you, you're an expert in your, one, in your field, but there's certain parts that you're not an expert in, and that was the neatest thing about doing this, is that you got to learn from an expert in, their in each part of the class. So you didn't just, so when we learned about invertebrates, Dennis didn't have to teach us about invertebrates. I'm sure he knows them, but you know, we had Clay, who is like, you know, really into his all the invertebrates, teach us that, and then Dennis taught us about uh, algae and seagrasses. So it was really neat to have that each person um, explain and get you really enthusiastic about what their passion yeah. for science is. Yeah, it really facilitated um, learning. A little bit more. I and think. the schedule um, was all marine science, all week, all semester. So it was, um, I mean, you essentially eat, breathe, and sleep um, marine science. Absolutely. And um, we had, as Dennis said earlier, the lab was all day and Wednesday. Right. So we did marine ecology one week and marine biodiversity the other week, and you'd have full, you know, essentially eight hour labs. And I remember that there were days that we didn't get out of there till eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night because we were analyzing data. And I mean, maybe we were just really excited and into it too. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure when you guys were doing a lot of your stuff, you stayed in there because it was something that was really exciting for you. Um, and then of course, we'd have on a couple of days, we'd have two hour lunch breaks. So we took full advantage of the Fort Pierce Inlet um, being not too far away and we'd able to go and enjoy the ocean and probably come back with like 155 right before our two o'clock class dripping wet um, and go take class and I mean it kept us awake for a couple hours. You know? um, we made a lot of friends along the way and um, had lots of enjoyable experiences uh, immersing ourselves in science as well, well. And the people that you're with are people that are really interested in marine science as well so you develop these relationships like Nicole was saying with um, an interest with all the people that you're that you have these interests that are in common and you have a lot of fun and you get weird like making algae masks and stuff like that I mean you know, maybe it was really late that night I don't know <laughs> <laughs> after an eight-hour lab yeah that'll happen um, and then we continued on uh, yes. I guess you can. so after um, I did the semester by the sea um, I volunteered with Dr. Amy Wright, because I went to all the ocean science lectures. I hope you guys took full advantage of that while they were going on every Wednesday. But um, our class definitely went to every single lecture. If we couldn't make the 4 o'clock one because we didn't get out of class exactly at 3.50, we'd uh, make the 7 o'clock one. But we made sure to go and listen to what the scientists are doing here on campus. And um, one of the uh, scientists on campus that really sparked my interest um, was Dr. Amy Wright. So I went and volunteered in her lab while I was still a Semester by the Sea student and then I became an intern and then I became an intern again the following <laughs> summer <laughs> and then I started working for her and I'll get on with that. But um, uh, I switched my, still doing the marine, marine science, marine biology, um, but I like the chemistry aspect of everything. So I actually started looking for chemical compounds from deep sea marine sponges that can actually um, kill cancer cells. So that's what I'm, uh, that's what I started working on and did uh, two summer internships under Dr. Amy Wright. And uh, I guess taking a year off <laughs> um, while Priscilla was finishing up her degree in 2001, we moved back to Boca for a year. Um, she was so happy with her um, 2001 internship that I came up and uh, I'd met Dr. LaPointe, same thing at Ocean Science Lecture Series. I pitched uh, some of my specialty to him, which is um, uh, underwater scuba fish counts. Um, and I decided that we both had a common interest. He'd been working at Lou Key and uh, in the lowercase. 
um, for the last 30 years. So it was a natural fit. My uh, family has a house on the same key, and I've been going there since about the same time, I don't know, the early 80s. So uh, that became um, my first uh, project in uh, marine science. And similar, you know, I presented a poster at a couple of different uh, scientific meetings and um, actually parlayed that into what I'm doing now, which is still working with Dr. LaPointe. Um, but in between uh, that 2002 internship, um, I had to wait a few years until Brian had some funding. So I worked at um, conveniently located on Harbor Branch's campus, uh, Ocean Reefs and Aquariums, which grows um, ornamentals for the aquarium industry. So I, uh, I worked a couple years there. And uh, that's me working with some of our uh, Pacific uh, Acropora corals. Uh, I also had the opportunity to keep up on my diving uh, with Harbor Branch, so I became a scientific diver while still uh, working at ORA. And uh, the lower left, that's uh, me in Calabria, Puerto Rico, in the cobia cage, which is an open ocean aquaculture facility uh, growing cobia. Um, and then, like I said, I, after a year waiting for Brian to, uh, to get his funding, um, we got a, a grant from Florida Fish and Wildlife, so it was uh, state-funded, state and I uh, started doing uh, my scuba fish counts again. So after my two internships, um, I, I think I took a week off and then came back as a research assistant, um, still doing the same stuff in Dr. Amy Wright's lab. And since you guys all had the, you know, the class to go out on a boat, I actually um, got into a group that uses the ship and the submersible for their research. So I was able to partake in a, a number of research cruises, uh, mostly off the Gulf of Mexico or the Bahamas. So um, I was able to dive in the back of the submersible a number of times um, and just see how it's like to really start um, that oceanographic experience and bringing things up from the, from the bottom using the submersible. And when I'm back in the lab, I'm grinding things up and getting extracting compounds from them that will potentially kill cancer cells. It's really neat to see that beginning process, and then I'm doing that, you know, more towards the end process. So it's really neat to get to see the whole thing. And then just some of our milestones. Um, just a couple years ago, um, I'd done my my many many years of going in the back of the submersible. So I got to um, finally get to go and dive in the front of the submersible in the yeah. little bubble. Yeah, where um, the chief scientist goes where you get to tell where, you know, what you want to collect and where you want the submersible to go. So that was probably one of the things I always remember about Harbor Branch. And then um, Chip and I also uh, met, well, we were in classes before then at FAU because we were both marine biology, but we met at Harbor Branch and um, we got married just a couple years later. And luckily for me, my, my wife was in with the uh, submersible people, so uh, one year they needed a photographer, and as part of my job with uh, Dr. LaPointe, I've been able to do some marine photography. So anyway, I went on board as the ship's photographer and did my first submersible dive in the back, and my first, first author scientific publication was from that dive. So um, I've also had that opportunity here, and uh, that's one of my photos of the sub uh, in situ, right off of Fort Pierce in the Gulf Stream, Florida Current. And then um, the other thing that got me involved really with Dr. LaPointe and marine science in general was to, to try and have an impact on uh, future generations for what they're able to see in the marine environment. And the lower right is uh, Brian and I at the sewage outfall in Hollywood, Florida. And as part of our research, we were able to um, make recommendations based on what we've collected uh, in the water there to uh, have Florida uh, ban the use of sewage outfalls by 2020. So we were partially instrumental in, in getting some of that uh, legislation through. So it's been, uh, it's been great opportunities. And then we also, um, through, well, let's see, after I was working with Amy Wright, I decided that maybe I should just go back to grad school. And I decided to go for my PhD in chemistry. Um, and I just graduated last semester. Oh, well, I had the opportunity, you know, 
while I was collecting data with Brian, we, we studied about um, anywhere from 30 to 80 different sites uh, over the years for the project that I was on. So I, I chose one of those sites that um, was readily accessible for, for continual study and um, collected my data for my master's, um, which was on uh, the impacts of harmful algal blooms on uh, reef fish communities uh, in Florida. And we're still here. <laughs> uh, <So. laughs> I'm still a, a biological scientist with uh, Dr. LaPointe, um, still his, uh, his chief diver. Um, that's also another Semester by the Sea student right next to me in the picture, Scott Hurley. Was my dive buddy for about four years uh, on our project, and um, yeah, you and know, I, oh. I was just recently named dive supervisor, so I'm working on kind of a a science and diving career um, still, ten years later. So I just wanted to end on um, not just how cool Semester by the Sea is, but I also wanted to say to how everybody, you know, how this pertains to, how can this pertain to you? You don't have to take every single class that's offered in the Semester by the Sea program. Um, our first year when we did this in 2001, we actually had um, somebody, she was probably in her 50s, 60s, yeah. just sitting in and auditing the marine science class. So she came in, she didn't have to take the test or anything, but it was something that she was interested in and she wanted to learn about it. So it doesn't matter what your age is, you, I mean, I would, you know, definitely say if you're in the, if you, if you live in the area or if you're something that you're very interested in to take a class. Yeah, as you heard today, um, word of mouth has really been what's spread um, the semester by the sea to the next year's students. So all of you, I want you to go back and tell all of your, <laughs> you know, sophomore, junior friends how great this was, if it was great. Or freshman and, um, too, because Nicole yeah, I mean, freshman. Let everybody that you can know and, and tell your friends, tell your neighbors. Tell everybody about it so that we can get this course up to uh, uh, you know 30. Well, I don't know how many of the instructors want. Maybe 20. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll shoot for that. Um, also, uh, well, why I was here, and I thought it was a very valuable experience. But not just for while you're taking classes. Also, um, when you have the time, is to volunteer at some of your local areas. It can, doesn't necessarily have to be Harbor Branch. It could be some of your other. Um, local non-for-profits and learning centers that you can volunteer and start talking to people about it. It gets you excited about it. It gets other people excited about it. And your excitement passes on. And uh, you know, just to, to close so that we have some marine resources left to uh, study for the next 10 years is to um, everyone try to do your part to uh, protect the environment and go green. So the only thing left for me to do is to just thank a lot of people again, all the students, um, those who are here, those who have been here in the past, um, all the faculty, um, and all the education staff. Most of them are sitting right over there. Um, Jill's in the back. Uh, Dr. Wiesenfeld, who I mentioned earlier, uh, early on, had a vision about the program, as did Jerry Lafferty and Senator Ken Pruitt. Could not have launched the program without them. And there's many, many other people that um, maybe we didn't mention tonight because of time, but without them, we could not have had as much success as we've had. So I want to uh, thank everybody for coming, and we're going to invite uh, questions for any of the presenters. Um, so thank you.